Hello, is this Christy? Yes, hi. Hey, Christy, this is Susan. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Hey, doing great. Thank you. I so good. appreciate you taking time to call in and uh, talk to our I think it's insiders today. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time for me. I appreciate it. Oh, totally my pleasure. Um, we're excited to be talking about your upcoming Christmas album, but also want our insiders to get to know you a bit. Yeah. And many will know you as a worship leader from the Passion Ministries or as half to do a watermark with your husband, Nathan. What is life like for you these days? Well, life is busy. We have um, a 16-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter and a 9-year-old daughter. So they keep us busy. They're actually really fun ages right now. Lots of conversation, uh, lots of teachable moments. So life is, you know, about parenting in in a lot of ways from for us right now. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah, and we are back in Franklin, Tennessee, which um, we're really enjoying getting to be back here. We lived here for a while. Our kids were all born here, and then spent time in Atlanta for seven years. So we're back here, and um, we're involved in a lot of different things in our community, and just. Um, just started a thing with some friends uh, called The Well, and we're uh, doing that once a month for women of Nashville. And it's just, yeah. it's been a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful season. It's busy. It's really busy, but it's been good. Oh, my God, to open up all kinds of doors for you to minister. I love it. Yeah, it's been sweet. Well, there's all kinds of celebrations coming up. If my research is right, November 17th is a special day for both of us. Really? Is this your birthday? Yep, I'm a few years ahead of you, but yes, that's my birthday too. But well, that was just meant to be. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, and over the past weekend, I loved listening to one of your newer ventures, your podcast, The Glorious and the Mundane. So oh, I've got an advantage. I feel like I've been hanging out with you and some of your friends and eavesdropping on some really great conversations. Well, thank you. Hey, would you yeah, tell that's... our insiders a little bit about your vision for the podcast? Sure, yeah. So the name of it is called The Glorious and the Mundane, and that's kind of, that thought came to me um, by way of this mentor that's been in my life. Her name's Terry, and um, I sat with her probably, um, it's been eight or nine years ago now, and she's a mother of nine children. Wow. She's a songwriter, and I kind of sat with her, and it was that moment of breakdown where it was like, I can't do it at all. How do you do this? You know, how are you parenting? How are you writing songs? How are you um, spending time with the Lord? You know, and with tears in my eyes, you know, asking her that. And she just looked at me and she said, you get to invite the glorious into the mundane. You invite the glorious things of God into everyday stuff. And so she said, I write songs on my laundry room floor. And I hold up my kids' laundry, and I pray for them. And you just, she's like, you just have to mix the glorious into your to-do list, basically. And so that changed my life forever that day. And I even began to songwrite in a different way from that moment on. So songwriting was while I was cleaning in the carpool line. Literally, it, I, didn't, I felt like I had to compartmentalize my whole life. Yeah. And there's time for songwriting, and then there's time for this. Well, no, it, ha- it needed to be all one thing because that's just how it, you know, that's how life is when you have children. And so, um, it was life changing for me. And I, I think it's that way even if you don't have children, even if you're a, a single woman and you're um, still needing to, you know, go to work and get things done, and you can still, you know, on your drive, maybe it's. Um, you know, you're on the freeway or you're stuck in traffic, that can be time for a conversation with, with the Lord who's with you and he's, he's, he's with us now. And so I really wanted the podcast to be just that. When women are taking a walk or they're on the treadmill or they're stuck in traffic, they're in the carpool line, just those moments that we can be reminded in, a, in the crazy world that we live in right now of what is worth living for and what is worth putting our minds on and setting our minds on and so that's the glorious and the mundane it's just it's just stories and all kinds of things that you know keep us on track of what it is that we're living for and it's it's jesus and and 
and that he really can speak to us in the everyday things of life. So that's where it came from. He can. I tell you, you blessed me over the weekend, and it's like I can't wait to keep listening to more of them. So uh, it's working, and you do. You have such a balance of being transparent and bringing forth the word of God and lifting up Jesus. And keep it up, girl. I love it. Thank you. And so you've been recording albums since the mid-1990s, but you've got your very first solo Christmas album, The Thrill of Hope, releasing soon. Hey, it's yes. wonderful. So what's taking you so long to record a Christmas project? Um, I don't know, honestly. Um, I think it was, it felt maybe like it was this, um, marker moment of my life or something to finally release a Christmas record because I've always listened to, um, records like, you know, Amy Grant's Home for Christmas and to me, that came out the year that Nathan and I met and got married and, and, you know, of course it's these gorgeous Christmas records that, um, you know, probably have the London Symphony on it or something, and it, it wasn't, we knew that was something that wasn't attainable for us, so it was always this thing that we just kind of put off and put off, and, well, maybe we'll do that Sunday, or, but we would still, really the last few years, we've done a lot of Christmas concerts because we love Christmas music, and um, people would go out to our table afterwards and say, well, where's her Christmas record, and, and we would say, sorry, we've never done one, and so it's really me like to finally just go we're doing this okay we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do this and and we we took a big risk by asking because this is an independent release i'm not on a record label anymore and so we took a risk and asked friends and fans and family to help us fund it and they did and they funded it and actually over what we even asked for and we are just blown away, and so we're so excited that we finally get to offer this to the world, and it just was the right time, and it's fun. Well, that's great. A lot of times Christmas albums are recorded in, like, hot summer months. Did you decorate or do anything to kind of set a Christmas mood while you were recording? <laughs> yes, yes, we did, for sure. Um, it was in the summer. It was in July, and we... Um, we had a couple of Christmas trees and lights strung everywhere and candles. And we even had a friend drop by um, with Christmas cookies. Like he went to the store and cut them out, like cut the shapes out and iced them and everything. <laughs> hey, that's a good friend. I know. It was so sweet. Well, so. the cover has a beautiful amaryllis. And your album opens up with The King is Coming, not the Gaither version. <laughs> yeah. And it really builds anticipation for that story that you unfold in the album. Tell us a little bit more about The Thrill of Hope. Yeah, so I really wanted it to have this story kind of unfold or kind of an arch to the story. And really, if you look at Christmas from a kind of the slant of Advent where it's this expectation and you kind of um, – slow your pace a little bit and you still your heart and you make room and you really um, think about what life would be like, you know, if you didn't have the hope of a Savior. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in that sometimes in remembrance, you know, that we really set our hearts around what Jesus really offers us when he came as the Messiah and the, the life that he offers us now it's just so full and free and so I really want you know the spirit of Advent is really to look at Christmas from two different angles it's like you're looking forward to um, the coming that you know the Messiah we know that he's already come but you're kind of setting yourself back in this moment of that waiting and that ex that anticipation that expectation but also it's to expect his second coming and so in a strange way when I was writing this record I kept thinking about his second coming as well and so I found out that joy to the world this is an interesting um, tidbit but joy to the world was not written as a Christmas hymn it's actually a second coming hymn that's how the writer wrote it cool. and so it's at the very end of this record to be enjoyed as a Christmas hymn for those of us who still will always put it in that category, but also it's at the end it's it's that it's it's that um, advent of 
Jesus, we're, we're waiting, we're, we believe you're coming back. And so that prelude, the king is coming, is at the beginning of the record, and then it's right after Joy to the World at the end of the record. So the whole record and in between is, um, you know, the life that he offers us now. What is what does it look like, Emmanuel, here with us now? You know, so there's some mm-hmm. just fun songs in there. There's just there's beauty. There's um, a little bit of everything, I think, stylistically. And so I'm excited for people to experience it. I think it we really want it to, to have a classic feel. We want it to be so timeless and reverent, but, but beautiful and fun, too. And so... We'll see. I hope everybody loves it as much as we do. I do. I think it's great. You've got celebration and worship and all the things you're mentioning, and definitely it's a good one to add to everyone's collection. It's just, I love it. Good job. It's like, yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, hey, I heard it's extra special, too. You had some family members participating in the recording? Yes. So this summer, we had a couple of summer birthdays, and so – my whole family, actually, it's been a long time since both of my brothers and their kids could all be at my house, and so and my parents were here. So we had quite a little reunion, and while they were there, it happened to be, or while they were here, it happened to be the, the time that we could actually sing some vocals on the record. And so we had just my family is singing on Oh Come Let Us Adore Him. So that's my mom and dad, and that's. Um, most of the grandkids, I think all the grandkids, so eight of the grandchildren were in the room. And it was so sweet. And then we had them sing on several others as well, and the kids just had so much fun. There's like a, there's a jig on the record um, that's just a full-out celebration, and the kids had fun stomping around and jumping and clapping and hollering. and <laughs> So you can hear them having fun on that one. It's really sweet. I think that's awesome. Well, I just want to let everybody know that Christy's Christmas album, The Thrill of Hope, has got 14 wonderful tracks. It officially releases on November 4th, but starting Friday, October 28th on iTunes, you can pre-order it for one week only at the amazing price of $7.99. And you'll receive Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas as an instant download. And uh, so I want to encourage everyone to pick up at least one copy. Hey, great time to get your Christmas shopping going. Mm-hmm. Have you started your Christmas shopping, Christy? <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot. I guess I can. T- I can technically say yes. I have. I have. I have picked up a few small things. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. just to start it. Yeah, you got a couple of months here. Well, yeah. it has been such a pleasure talking with you, and thank you for sharing your life and your walk so transparently through your music, your podcast, and the many ministries God has laid out before you. I know it's blessed my heart, and I just can't wait to see what God has in store for you in the coming years. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.